The week before 9-11, John Barra told his parents about how excited he was to visit the World Trade Center. He was working as a producer for New Jersey's public television network at the time and had arranged an interview that would take place at the very top of the towering complex. When the day of the interview came, tragedy struck. A jet plane hijacked by a terrorist working with Al-Qaeda had smashed into the Twin Towers, leaving thousands of workers to die in the impact. Uh, today, we've had a national tragedy. Uh, two airplanes have crashed into the World Trade Center in an apparent terrorist attack on our country. I have spoken to the Vice President, to the Governor of New York, to the Director of the FBI, and I've ordered that the full resources of the federal government uh, go to help the victims and their families and, the, and to conduct a full-scale investigation to hunt down and to find those folks who committed this act. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. And now if you join me in a moment of silence, May God bless the victims, their families, and America. It's difficult to find the words to describe the feeling in New York City today. New York City is in shock. One of its most famous landmarks destroyed, thousands dead, and America is under siege. But among the horrified onlookers was John, who had made the last minute decision to conduct his interview the day before. Just 24 hours earlier, he had stood at the exact spot that would be incinerated by the impact of the plane. The most emotional part for me is when we were parking in the bottom of the Trade Center on the 10th, we were talking to one of the guards about the previous bombing that had happened at the Trade Center, you know, 10 years earlier or something like that. And the woman said, this building can survive anything. It is so uh, perfectly sound and safe and it's just chilling to even hear those words again back to me not knowing that in less than 24 hours the entire uh, structure was going to come down. John's team at the television station was one of the many brave crews that ran directly into the fray to keep America updated. He remembers being torn between joining them at the scene and staying put in New Jersey as he had no clue if the attack was over. When we were shooting the b-roll out of the windows and out of the top of the it, it it was it's breathtaking i mean it really was it was a massive structure and just to to think about it now of the people who had to jump or the people who burned it's just i, I can't even fathom what your brain does in that moment it's like do i burn or do i jump and and i think that's the part that really affected me the most because you know you can't help it if you're there if you're just uh, tragedy adjacent you do spend a lot of time and a lot of discussions with therapists about like, if I was there, what would I have done? And you know, and it's hard to wrap your head around the fact of someone saying to you, but you weren't down, there. The down. The, the crash, the other trade center's down. It's down. It's down. As far as John's parents knew, their son was one of the thousands trapped in the blaze. Phone lines had gone dark throughout the tri-state area and people had only their television to keep them up to date. The day of was completely chaotic. I, do, I honestly really don't remember where it was going, what I was doing. I just remember being on the phone and then also dealing with eventually when the phones were up again, my own family saying like, where are you? Because they were convinced I was in it because I said I was going on the 11th, that I was completely gone. I didn't see what happened, but I saw people jumping out of the building just now. I'm trying to save my sisters all night because she's in that building. <laughs> So, like dealing with the emotion of my own family trying to explain, I was there yesterday, not today, and then my job for uh, news and public affairs and, and client work was just, it, it's really weird because you're making me relive it right now, and, I'm, and, and my brain just goes right back to the complete chaos and confusion. But I think when you work in news especially, you need to take that pause where it's like, we need to, we're reporters, we need to report what is going on. So there was a sense of like bizarre calm. And then it obviously as the day went on, you know, with, the, with what was happening at the Pentagon and then what was happening in, in Pennsylvania, it just kept going where you felt like this is it. The vision of people choosing to take their own lives rather than die in the wreckage haunts him. 
and he remains heartbroken over people who were waiting inside for directions on what to do when the second plane hit. I couldn't go back to the site after it came down. It was too, it was just too, it was too raw. And they did. And they went and they just kept saying to me on the phone, they're like, just the smell of the, of, of death. And um, my father was also, is, is also a Vietnam veteran. So he definitely knows the smell of death. And it made him flash back to that. So. Although I wasn't there, I definitely know what that must have been like. You know, and then and then going to the museum, it was like that was part of my um, part of my healing from it because you know there's there's a section in the museum that really showed it was a pile of like a woman's heel, someone's someone's purse, a set of keys, and it's just like this is these are the remnants of very very innocent people. Um, but it helped me heal. Eight years later, John found the courage to return to the site. He went to watch city officials break ground for the new memorial that would be built. What was amazing was the sense of community and the sense of like this common bond. People came out of their houses, they talked to each other, they put up American flags. There was much more of a, we need to heal together as a nation. And it was really strong in the tri-state area, obviously because it didn't matter where you lived in, in, uh, in Connecticut, New York, and New Jersey, you knew somebody who was in the building. Today, he still keeps that memory close and hopes people believe in their strength to overcome.